Hello, hello, welcome. Thanks everybody for tuning in today and talking about publishing and getting your work into print. I will be your host, Nick Rich. I'm currently a photographer in Los Angeles and also faculty member at NYFA at the Los Angeles uh, chapter. Uh, today, I'm going to introduce our a couple of our panelists and starting off with uh, another photographer, John Henry. And can you just introduce yourself quickly, briefly, and just let us know, you know, kind of work you make. Absolutely. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, my name is John Henry. I'm a visual artist and educator, uh, born and raised out of Queens, New York, um, but residing out of Brooklyn, um, currently um, representing from the Lenape people out here in Brooklyn and Canarsie. Um, what do I do? I don't know. That's a good question. Um, <laughs> I guess pr predominantly fine art um, is where my work lives. Um, but I also do commission portraits for different publications, um, mostly environmental portraiture. Um, that with fine art is where my work sits. Beautiful, thank you. Um, your portraits are beautiful. And another one of our panelists, uh, Dana, would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, how are you? Um, so yeah, my name is Dana Sterling. I'm originally from um, Israel, but I've been here in uh, Queens, New York about 10 years now. Um, I'm a photographer, uh, mainly still life, and I'm also the co-founder and editor of Flow Photo Magazine, which is mainly an online um, platform, but we also do um, exhibitions, publications sometimes, and just... Um, a great community and that's it thank you beautiful beautiful thank you for that um and i'd like to introduce maria hi everybody um thanks for having me i am maria i'm a colombian commercial and editorial photographer i'm also currently part of the yep committee from the hollywood um professional association and mainly um, um, I focus a lot on um, empower, empowering women um, within the music and entertainment industry. And um, yeah, I also work a lot as a Digitech and yeah, very happy to be here. Lovely. And last but definitely not least, uh, Brett Vick, if you can introduce yourself and your work. Hey, uh, I'm Ritwik. Uh, thank you for having me here. Uh, I'm a beauty fashion uh, photographer based out of uh, New York as well as Jersey. Uh, I'm a studio here in Jersey City. Uh, I've been doing photography for about four or five years and, I've, and I do essentially editorial photography. That's it. Here. Beautiful. Thank you, guys. You all have such lovely work and it's like a nice variety. Um, today's conversation will be, it, it'll be a back and forth, you know, pretty casual. So feel free to jump in if you have a, a answer for any question and, and we'll move forward that way, okay? So I wanna start off with when searching for a way to publish your work or searching for a publication, um, how do you guys suggest um, or how have you in the past uh, went about looking for publications that um, fit your work? Smaller, larger, it doesn't matter the size. Um, I guess I can jump in. Um, I don't know, it's kind of odd because I, I know that I don't do that many submissions for things, but um, I think it's things that I'm always interested in, whether it's, you know, publication or even um, curatorial works, it's, you know, publications that are aligned with the mission that I'm interested in. Mm -hmm. um, so they're either showing the type of work that I'm working with or showing those type of artists who I am aligned with, whether it be my network or just outside of that network um, or that community. Um, so that's, you know, it's a publication that upholds their like the same values. Um, so that's really important to me to, you know, be in conversation with that. Um, not that I don't look at other publications that are outside of that, but mm -hmm. that's kind of where I start first and then branch out um, off of it. 
that yeah. makes sense. Yeah, definitely. I think it's important to find like a publication that of course aligns with the work, but I think it's also really nice that you mentioned like going outside of that box too. Like, you know, try, see where you can fit in. Um, yeah. How about you, uh, uh, Rutvik, Rutvik, sorry. And uh, am I saying your name right, Rutvik? Yes, okay, yes, great. it's Rutvik, yes. <laughs> um, uh, I know that you have some international experience. So yeah. how do you kind of go about in that way? So initially when I started out, it was working with a lot of photo book magazines and indie magazines. Uh, I used to submit to like 10, 20 magazines at a time for each editorial and see which one essentially picks me. Now it has evolved to a position where I get to say, okay, I want to have my work published in Grammar. And this is the story that I want to showcase. And I pitch that to Glamour and say, okay, uh, are you guys willing to take this editorial and get it published in your magazine? And this is something that your viewers would be interested in as well. So it's, it's always that, you know, uh, you have to consider what you want to get published as well. And you also have to consider the fact that will they publish your work? Mm. Uh, given that your aesthetic is might be different from theirs or the kind of work that you do might be different from theirs as well. Yeah. So when you approach, I guess, the smaller versus the bigger, what's, what's the difference? Have you experienced a difference? Oh, yeah. There's a huge difference. Uh, when I worked with smaller uh, publications, it was more of a submission uh, than, okay, I have a photo story. Will you publish it next month? Right. Whereas now, uh, when I work with bigger brands and bigger publications, it's more of they uh, give me a list of, okay, on uh, May of this month, we're going to run an issue based on this concept. You have to shoot something along these lines so we can fit you into this, into this issue. Uh, it's more or less the same. It's just the timeline of it and the way you submit is slightly different. Yeah. Uh, for indie magazines, you would just submit, whereas a publication, you would have to uh, pitch, then submit. Uh, and pitch needs to get accepted as well before it gets published. Otherwise, they don't uh, take the submission as well. And there's also, um, it has happened to me multiple times that the subjects I photograph, they're doing something even if it's like um, for film or like music videos or like different like high profile things going on in their career. And then there's also like different publications that wanna publish um, work that that person and myself have done together. So it's also through that, like that's another route to getting to editorials is like the subjects you're photographing are also getting published um, and then, then you just like getting to those publications as well. Mm -hmm. And Dana, can you, Donna, Dana, Dana? Donna, that's okay. Donna. I'm gonna <laughs> stick with Donna. Um, can you talk from your perspective? Cause I know that you work on the opposite end. So we're the photographers submitting to you but I know you're reviewing our work. Can you kind of talk about the submission process and you know, do you have a sort of rubric that you go through? Um, to you know, accept projects or can you just talk about the process on your end and what that looks like? Yeah, sure. I think because I am a photographer myself and like I am an immigrant in, in this country. So I had to go through the process of creating a portfolio as an artist to get my O-1 visa. So I have a lot of experience with just submitting and the fact that I had to do a lot of research and find all these platforms and get, um, like get my work out as much as possible. So I have a lot of experience um, personally in submitting. So I think I have a more compassionate, um, I guess, approach to when people do submit to me because I do know how, how hard it is to submit, how much time it takes so that you have to like edit your photos, give them the right formatting um, and then actually send them out. And you, you always feel like you send a little bit of yourself to every place you submit. Um, and then if you don't get um, an email back or if you get rejected, it can always be very heartbreaking. So for me, when I do um, get submissions, I try and 
not only look at the work that's being submitted in the email, but I try and take the time to look at someone's website and portfolio because I've seen a lot of people actually submit um, their worst project versus their best project. Sometimes I am amazed, like the difference between what someone chooses to submit versus their actual portfolio. Um, so I think that's something to always have in mind that um, you should always put your best foot forward, right? Like um, try and show as much as you can, even if it's a short submission. Um, so I think for me, it's hard because I can't see everyone's work all the time. Um, and I know a lot of editors and publishers don't take the time to look at your portfolio. So, you know, every email has to really count. You have to be um, coherent. You have to give enough information, not overwhelming, and also have your images really speak loud to who you are as a photographer, as an artist. Um, yeah. I like that you do the deep dive into the people. Like that's I like, try. <laughs> yeah. that's like, I do. Okay, cool. That's good. Um, so in terms of like when you do um decide to make that that take that chance and publish your world, your your work into the world, um, can you guys share, you know, what is your biggest fear when you're thinking about publishing your work? I'm gonna I'm gonna start off with Maria. My biggest fear is that it won't align with what the publisher is looking for. Like if it's, for example, a commission or something, um, then I kind of always have that a little bit of fear, but then I just submit and I'm like, okay, this is it. I don't like, I just let it go <laughs> and let it go through. And then um, it's also like, um, like don't, um have that much fear about what they're gonna say probably um and just like I would say to people just don't submit based on what you think they're gonna think instead of what you feel and what you think of your own work and like the emotion you want to portray in it yeah okay I like that um what about you John um so fears as far as like publishing or submitting the work? That's, that's yeah. The... yeah, whichever one fits, we can go with publishing. So biggest fear when you're thinking about publishing. Hmm. I don't know. I mean, I don't have any fear. I just oh, get the okay. work out there. That's we just great. do it. Just put it out. <laughs> um, yeah, that's not what I'm fearful about. I mean, when, when it's out there, it lives and it's beyond, it's no longer in your hands and yeah. it, now exists in a either physical or you know wherever like that it's you've, you've given up that control it's out there and it's it's gone so you don't have that much um uh control i mean my my other I mean, thought as far as like submitting might be like a different discussion but um only because we were talking about it recently with some other students about um submitting to um like larger publications and just like the it's like a dance that you have to play as far as that, because sometimes you can submit something, but in that, and you know, maybe it's not a finished work and, you know, maybe that magazine might say, oh, that's a great idea, but then not give you the opportunity to shoot it. Right, right. They'll pass that on to someone else um, because they don't know you or they have no relationship with you or your body of work isn't at the standard, whatever that they're, um expecting so i don't know i think that could be you know sometimes fearful about submitting work because i have friends who are you know accomplished photographers who yeah. do have some pause um when going to publications for submissions um so i mean i, I guess that from fear standpoint i can see that being you know definitely um something fearful but i mean i think you bring up a good point so kind of like that part of submitting and publishing is like that rejection like and how you deal with it do you have any pointers as to how to deal with that sort of like having to like kind of pick yourself back up and keep going? Yeah, I mean, rejection is going to happen. You're, you're going to get a lot of no's and then there are going to be some yeses sprinkled in there. Um, I mean, the first things first, you have to start with good work. Your work has to be good. Your work has to be strong. Um, and then you go from there. I mean, I've got I've got a litany, a laundry list of no's 
um, before the yeses started, you know, really coming in consistently. Um, but you know, this is the this is the path you've chosen, and you need to see it through till the end. So just keep working as best as possible. Talk to your network. Talk to the people whose you know opinion you trust on you know giving you feedback. See what's working, and that's you know was actually interesting about what um, Donna mentioned about like looking at the rest of their work or the rest of their websites. Like you don't you don't get that often, yeah. and okay. you get too. Like when you get an email back, I know when submitting for like exhibitions or grants or whatever, you get two emails, one that says congratulations and one that says thank you. And once you see it says thank you, you get really angry because you're like, damn, you know that it didn't go through. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's, it's difficult, but you know, that's the, that is the name of the game. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Rupit, can you talk about um, uh, if you have any or ran into any biggest fears when you're thinking about publishing your work? So like I said, I mean, I do like 10, 15, I used to do 10, 15 submissions. The biggest fear was uh, not getting a reply. Uh, most of the magazines will definitely not reply if they're not interested. Uh, they'll not even reply saying no. So whether they accept it or not, the only way you would know is yes, they accept it. That's, it. That's the only way. And that would be the biggest fear. And my problem is that if they don't reply back in a week and we are expecting a no, but after two weeks they say a yes, by the time you move this editorial into a different magazine, you lost the idea of, okay, I want to get it published in X magazine, but it ended up landing being in Y magazine because of that reason. Uh, yeah, that's, that's one of the biggest fears that I have. Yeah. Okay, cool. So I know like during, this day and age, like everyone's going digital. Some people are still fighting for print. A couple of magazines have went out of print. So in style health, they've just completely cut it. Um, how do you guys, or how important is print to you today? How, 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 how do you think print will live on? Um, and not just magazine submissions. We can also talk about you know, publishing photo books or, you know, zines. How do you think you'll play a part five, 10, 20 years from now? Um, I think um, sometimes we have a tendency to be absolute, like absolute, like in the sense that it can be or digital or print as if things can't coexist. And I think um, there's a fear of something quote unquote like dying right like ending and I think um like I'm an analog photographer right so I use only film uh photography so um you know people always say oh film photography is going extinct but people are still using it and I think it's still valid and I think it can still live together with digital it's not that one is better than the other it's just it's a mm -hmm. different type of media right so I think um, the fact that some of the publications are closing, it's probably more of an economical struggle, right? So it's okay if they move to online platforms, I get it. But I think there's still always a need for the physicality of publications. I think artists um, enjoy having their photos in books and making zines and just sharing their work in different types of platforms. So I personally think there's always room for this type of um balance between digital and print I think they can coexist um, like my platform is mainly online mm -hmm. but when we can we we try and do physical things like exhibitions or publications because it's fun it's a, another way to celebrate people's work so um, I think digital has opened up a lot of options for people especially younger artists maybe people who don't fit in the mainstream photography world um, it definitely gave them a place to live and be celebrated. Um, I just think things can like coexist. Yeah, I agree. Um, that's a very important like statement. They can coexist, right? Like we don't have to do one or the other. The excitement of picking up a photo book or a magazine or going into a bookstore for me personally is like, I'm, I'm elated. So you're right, you're right. That's a great point. Um, what do you guys think, uh, Maria? Yeah, I think the same. 
actually film photography has made a huge comeback in the past few years. And I've seen more and more people going to film and just doing that. Um, but going back to like print or digital publications, I do think it's merely more of a, an economical thing. Uh, it's of course much more expensive to print and, you know, um, it, there's a lot of stuff involved in printing. Uh, it's a huge also process. So, you know, it's to me what I've seen, it's more economical, but it also like how um, Dana was saying, I do think both can coexist. And I've seen a lot of um, smaller magazines just uh, be online magazines and then um, do like the occasional collector's print issue. And then they do like, also an exhibition going with it. So that even sometimes even it makes it a little bit more like special. Um, so yeah, I think I'm not sure where it's going because you know, I guess Dana knows better about like everything um, about the publications, but I do feel like that's, um, I've seen that a lot. So John, do, can you kind of jump in and talk about, I know that, um, you've worked a lot or a little bit in print. Can you kind of talk from your perspective of how you feel about still holding that tangible item of work? Yeah, I mean, the, the print is still the final form of the photograph yeah. um, as evident in, you know, museums and galleries and stuff like you still are going there to see a physical object. Um, and yeah, of course, the magazines are dying off and periodicals as well. It's difficult for them to stay on the shelves because um, the cost is so prohibitive, but um, there's still space for that. Um, you know, a lot of magazines um, are, you know, going down from, you know, bi-monthly to quarterly or, you know, bi-yearly or whatever. And, you know, they do like, I think like Marie Angela said, or mentioned, you know, like these larger, um, like special edition magazines where you can still have that physical object and that means something. And, you know, to be able to hold your work, you know, in your hand, like that, that, that is really special. And it's just a different feel than um, clicking a link and seeing it online. Again, not that, you know, better or worse, it's great to have both of them, but, you know, just be able to have that physical um, object is great. Um, but yeah, it's it's difficult, you know. Like I said, the uh, print is, you know, whatever. They're less, but there still are options out there, thankfully. Yeah. Brett Vig, do you have any? Uh, yeah. So when I work with print magazines or digital magazines, for that matter, uh, the print value of it in the uh, Western world or US to be more uh, is comparatively less. And when I work with Asian magazines, uh, for example, Harper's Bazaar, Vietnam, or uh, Bulgaria, or any of those European countries or Asian countries, they still value print a little bit higher than the US, uh, especially because their labor cost is less. Uh, because of that, their value of print will be cheaper for them, comparatively speaking. Uh, so print will will exist, and I and I love print. And my entire studio is full of uh, print wallpapers and all that. Uh, but digital is making an exciting new avenues for all kind of artists as well. Uh, we are now doing digital covers. We are doing digital animations and digital, uh, you know all these kind of stuff in terms of digital where you have a little bit more of uh, a little bit where you can stretch your wings a little bit and see where that goes. You're not just working with a still image, but a moving image or a uh, two and a half D image like cinemagraphs that you see all the time. Uh, these are making a huge introduction into the digital format and it's time to take advantage of that and uh, go into that direction as well, as well as valuing the existing print uh, that will keep on hopefully existing. Yeah, I think that's a really great point. And um, we have 
there are many ways for print and digital to work together too, right? So right. like the yes. AI, like you can scan and look at it on your phone. Right. It's also like an actual, yeah. Like I think that's- Yeah, I mean, Times, uh, Times uh, just did a new issue of where they did a print copy and you take your phone and you put it in front of the magazine, it will give you the AR image. Mm -hmm. uh, augmented reality and that kind of cool stuff you will be able to combine if you take advantage of both the mediums. Uh, that is where uh, you can appreciate print as well as digital at the same time. Definitely. Yeah, I, I think I'm going to be that person who has like a house full of like magazines. <laughs> right. I, I can't let go of print like that, like photo books and magazines. That's that's it for me. Uh, I still get every single copy of my magazine and I store it no matter what, even if it's a small magazine. I just want to hold on to it no matter what. Yeah. I mean, to John Henry's point, right? That's the that's the right. end the end point of this journey of this of this image, right? Of a series or you know, whatever that you're creating. Um, so question from social. We might have touched on this a bit, so we don't have to spend too long on it, but how do you go about finding publishers that are a good fit for your work? So are there any other recommendations or suggestions outside of just, you know, a good Google search um, that you guys well, might find helpful? Mm -hmm. I found, um, again, because I had to do such a um, big research about like submitting stuff for my visa, I found that one of the best things um, is to actually find artists that you're interested in or do similar work or kind of have the same mindset and just go to their website and look at their CV and basically just go through their CV um, and see what makes sense. Um, I found a lot of publications that way. Um, I found great um, platforms, other websites. Um, and I, I think it's like a quick way of getting introduced into new platforms. Uh, even if you go into people's social media and see who they're following on Instagram, it's, it's so quick, it's so immediate, um, but it's amazing how many platforms are out there that you probably don't know about. Um, so I think that's a great way. And also there are websites dedicated to featuring like calls for entry and different types of um, listings. So if you follow a few of those, they always, um, update yeah so uh, there's a really good space to submit your work as well uh caviar is a website where you can submit like uh they do uh call for submissions and that kind of a thing uh where you'd be catering more towards the artists and getting yourself published initially at least to build your book and your cv uh, but as time goes on and you want to get published in bigger house magazines, you essentially have to work, start working with PR brands now. Uh, initially, photographers used to go to the editor and say, hey, I have this story and let's publish this. Uh, now PR companies have taken over that kind of a middleman job where they have connections to 10 different magazines and the photographers can just submit to the PR brand and the brand will take care of the getting it published in the right magazine and in the right country uh, based on the work that you have. Maria or John, do you guys have any suggestions? Yeah, of course. It's, um, it's all research-based. Um, again, knowing your community, knowing about your work, knowing about the work of people who are next to you. Um, making work similarly to you like that's where it starts um, for me it was you know art blogs art forum art in America culture type looking at all of these different um, you know like digital publications but also some physical publications freeze um, and just studying and saying okay these are the different publications that are out there and then that just leads from one thing to another where you start going from these major publications on down the line to like smaller publications and then you get to see um and that's just through you know through the websites through instagram just seeing like oh these are the folks who are showing work these are up and coming um platforms that are showing work and just taking note of everything okay these are the folks i want to submit to these are you know folks to keep on my radar um, but it's 
again, for me, it's always about research and just, you know, looking at everything and, you know, just, you know, keeping an open mind. Yeah, I think the same. And also, like, I think that translates not also, not only to editorial, but like to commercial clients as well. It's like the same, you have to do the research. Um, it's a lot in my experience about community and having a community of photographers, having also a community of like, you know, all this networking with like the stylist, the makeup artist, like if you're doing lots of like, um, fashion or portrait that need these professionals um you never know where a commission or um a job is going to come from like honestly it has been from everywhere so yeah like i, I feel like the the openness <laughs> and research goes for basically everything I love that point to the community, Maria, because I think that's something that a lot of people kind of forget. Like we're always on this hunt for editors and like photo editors and PR and all these other people. You kind of just need to look to your right and see like, you know, talk to your friend, talk to their friend, you know, like kind of share ideas and share who you're talking to so that, and, and those people are going to know your work too, right? So yeah, totally. definitely make sure you're networking with other fellow photographers, digital techs, um <laughs> yeah and also to that point like even just to have a wide variety of photographers that know your work sometimes they're fully booked and they just need to recommend someone else um so that's also super important like not honestly not everything is competition I feel like there's so much space for everybody and what has happened to me is like different photographers recommend me to different stuff either editorial or commercial and um, same with stylists and everybody. So, yeah. Um, so, John, have you, you've self-published, correct? Um, not self-published. Self I mean, I've, been, I've been published a bunch of places, but not self. Um, does anybody have a photo book? Has anybody put out a photo book of their own work? I made a zine. made a zine. It's not a book, but yeah. it's, it's a zine, yeah. Like yeah. newspaper, low cost. Kind Can of you kind of talk spin. about like that process of like going to get it printed and like editing it down? You know, what, yeah. how did you kind of approach that? And, and did you feel like it was worth it? Oh, I think for sure. I think it was um, almost like a fun experiment more than anything else. Because um, I see my work a lot online like on my computer or my scans and it kind of gets, I don't know, it, it, you, you start feeling disconnected somehow. And I just wanted to explore the option of making something physical. Um, and the process was, was pretty simple. I did everything. Like I just sat with my images and I knew the limitations that I had um, based on how many pages I had to fill. And I kind of edited down to the images that I felt that both worked well together, but also made sense as a very short story. Um, and I just sent it off to print. It was super quick, super easy, fairly inexpensive, I guess. Oh no. Uh -oh. We might have lost her for a bit. So- By a copy. So I was able to- like, Hold on, you went out for a little bit. Oh, sorry, sorry. Where, where did I get cut off? Um, you said it was a uh, pretty low cost. Yes, so it was pretty low cost and very accessible in the sense that there's a lot of different platforms that you can self-publish um, books, newspapers, whatever. Um, and I think what was cool about it is that a lot of people who I know, like you mentioned, community, um, were really excited and everyone wanted to get one. So it was um, almost like a way to share my work with my peers and my colleagues and friends and it just became like a, a fun um fun little project i think um there's so much space for um artists to make their own things if it's their own exhibitions their own publications their own platforms i think if you can take advantage of it um there's very little that you would lose from that that experience um yeah. you can only gain from it if it's experience or just um 
seeing your work in a different light, um, I think I would definitely recommend um, if you can making something. It doesn't have to be expensive or big. It can just be something small, but it's very fulfilling. Um, yeah. 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 And it's like a labor of love, right? Because you have to like go through yeah. trying to find like a printmaker, the pa kind of paper you want within your budget. Yeah. Um, design, editing down your images. And then when you finally get to see that book, I don't know, a month or however long it took you to get it, it's like, oh, yeah. Yeah, it's exciting. Thank you for sure. And it's a nice little promo, you know, thing to exactly kind yeah. of share, not just with your friends, but if you have any portfolio reviews or anything like that, like a little leave behind. Um, yeah. How do you guys make it a point to show up and represent your culture in your work? Uh, Rick, I'm gonna have you go for it first. Okay, so, well, my culture, I represent uh, a lot with pictures. I mean, uh, whether we want to intentionally do it or unintentionally, it does happen a lot. Uh, I'm from India originally. So we are a lot about bright colors and contrasty images. Uh, so initially it used to be unconsciously, I used to make the images more saturated and more contrasty. But now I have figured out what my culture is mm -hmm. and how I can incorporate that. And I'm intentionally and controllingly doing that much more now. Uh, so that, that aesthetic will come from your past, whether you like it or not. Uh, it's, it's important to start controlling that aesthetic and moving that into a direction that you want to represent rather than it just happens, right? Uh, so that's something to, to just keep in mind when you're working with, you know, incorporating your culture into your work. How about you, Maria? The same. I feel I'm from Colombia and uh, coming to the U.S. has been quite an adjustment. <laughs> um, so, yeah, actually, like, um, I think I mostly photograph women and I mostly photograph Latino women. So like, it's just like, it, it goes like in your subconscious. And then when you look at your words, it's like, oh, <laughs> uh, this is what's going on. And then you kind of really, really embrace it and um, go with it because it's like, it's your point of view, it's your, colors, how you decide to edit, how you decide to light, how you decide to represent your own people. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. How about you, John? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I always work with what's local to me, what um, themes um, are central to, you know, my being. So whether it's the athlete's work, you know, once upon a time used to be an athlete. So I was always glued to that. Um, that realm. So I always want to, you know, photograph and document it in conceptual ways or from working, you know, within Stranger Fruit where I'm working with the African-American community at large. Um, again, it's stuff that I'm living, stuff that I am, you know, solely connected to. So, yeah. And then again, that's, you know, part of the, you know, personal work conversation where the importance of that you're working on things that matter to you and themes that matter to you. Um, so, yeah, I start with there and I go, from that so that the work feels natural and organic as it grows over time. Yeah, I like that. Okay, what sport did you play? The American majors, baseball, basketball, and football. There it is. <laughs> Once upon a time, a very long time ago. All right, and Dana, how about you? How do you incorporate your culture into Float? So I think for Float, not so much, but I think because I am an immigrant in, the, in this country, I, I do have this like passion to try and be like as open as possible. So I'm trying to be um, accepting to people from different like locations, different countries, different backgrounds, different religions. And I think, um, I think we're pretty successful with that because I think we did become international. We have people reaching us from different countries. Um, so I think by me being kind of like an outsider in this country I'm trying to like bring everyone in and I think it's just really important to uh, just try and trying to be as exclusive inclusive sorry as possible um 
because I feel like sometimes the photo world can be very small, can be very kind of like a uh, niche, right? So I think giving people a chance to show their work, maybe if they didn't have it before and just like allowing people to see work from different places, like um, it kind of opens your mind to um, different ways of, of seeing, right? And different life. So I try as much as possible to do that. Um, Hopefully I'm successful, but I think so, yeah. That's beautiful. You bring empathy in, in, um, into, into, into your magazine. Um, and yeah, I try to. Yeah, and that's coming from, you know, being a photographer and also being, um, being an immigrant to this country. Um, yeah. So just a reminder to the viewers, we are also taking questions. So feel free to send any questions that you may have. Um, so in terms of print, do you guys think um, you should have your own printer or do you think it's better to kind of have a printer, like, you know, outsource it, take care of that, take care of the coloring for you, paper selection? How do you guys feel? Which one do you think is best or which one do you works for you? Right, Vic? I mean, I think, oh, sorry. No, go no, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, I mean, I think it just kind of really depends on the person because like um, the same way like some artists um, like having a studio and some don't. I feel like everyone, every artist kind of has to find their own work process and workflow. I think um, we also have to understand that people have different budgets or different backgrounds. Um, they might not be able to, you know, afford um, something. But I think having the tools to make your process easier um, is always a plus. Um, it just makes you feel that you can connect more to the photography and the art than feeling the struggle of making. Um, but I think because there is so many options like uh, outsourcing, printing, scanning, developing, etc., cetera, um, there's no obstacle. Like you should be able to do whatever you want in any way you want to do it. So I think it really kind of depends on the person. Yeah. How about you, Vic? What were you going to say? Uh, yeah, I mean, I I used to outsource most of my printing before, uh, but I, I felt that there was a huge change in my aesthetic when I started printing my own work because I was able to see what kind of colors I was able to produce and what I was not able to produce, whether it is colors, exposure, whatnot. Mm -hmm. uh, but having a small printer in your studio or your home definitely helps a lot understanding your aesthetic and changing that a little bit more or controlling that a little bit more. Uh, whenever I do large size prints, when I need to give it to clients or something like that, yes, I will outsource that to whatever company that exists locally. But whenever I'm printing uh, as a promo card or a gift or something like that, I want to print it on my own and see what kind of things that I can do with that print and have that you know, a slight little bit extra control in that image uh, that I can push it out or pull it out of that image just to print. Uh, so, I mean, invest in like a small printer, at least A4 size printer or a letter size printer. Uh, it's not going to cost too much, but uh, it, it is going to be slightly expensive than digital, obviously. Uh, but yeah, print, I mean, having a home printer is a good option to explore your work a little bit more. Yeah, I think it just, I think, sorry to cut you off. I think it just depends on the, the end goal for um, whichever artist. Some people may not need print or their work is solely digital at this point um, where they're not at that position um, because printing is a luxury. Um, it's not just owning the printer, it's also paying for ink cartridges. Because yeah. ink is where it costs you the money. Yeah. Um, I have a printer because I kind of have to have it because so much of my end work is in prints. I sell the prints. Um, so I need to have that in-house as best as possible so that I can, you know, it's a luxury again. Owning the means of production, it's a luxury. It's nice to have when you can <laughs> afford it. Um, but yeah, again, it, it, it's, it's, it depends on each case by case. Yeah. And in terms, and since you since you own a printer, what what kind of printer do you, do you have? Is it a large format or 
Yeah, that's yeah. a large format, one of the um, Canon 2100s, I think. Yeah, okay. I know those ink cartridges are, are insane. Um, I feel like over time, it's more than the printer. Uh, go ahead, Maria. Yeah, I think it's very expensive. <laughs> um, but yeah, right at the moment, I outsource everything. Um, and there's actually a few commercial labs that do like all kinds of papers and all kinds of products. Those are like good for like fairly like small things or like, you know, regular clients. And then if you really need it for like an exhibition or something bigger, uh, definitely have your eyes on the printer and the paper is the best way, way to go. Do any of you guys have a favorite like paper, like a go-to paper, like outside of like luster? Like, do you guys have like a favorite? Yeah, so mine is uh, Hannah Mule Fine Art Barata and Fine Art Silk. Uh, those two are my favorite papers to print. Uh, I prefer more glossy kind of papers than matte papers. It's just for my aesthetic, it, it just prints well on glossy. So uh, Barata and Silk is like my favorite. That's what I use to print for most of my work in studio as well. Yeah. I print mostly um, Canson rag photographic, which is a matte paper. Don't mm -hmm. tell Dave Major. Um, <laughs> I've been printing on it forever. Um, but just to piggyback real quick on Maria Angela's point um, of like outsourcing, like that's important too, because one that keeps those places in business. Um, so one of the things, so like I shoot film, I don't develop that stuff myself. I keep my local you know, developing place in business by every week sending them stuff. Hey, develop this for me. So, you know, keep that community going. Sorry. When you go and get your film developed, do you also have them print it as well? No, I scan it and I print it, but okay. just the developing is, I, I that's too stressful for me to do. Yeah, I, do it. <laughs> I do, I, I do pay for like I, they develop here in LA. There's like, a few that do it, like that do a good job. And I make them develop and they, I make them print, um, not print, sorry, scan like the medium uh, JPEGs just for me to have them. If I wanna use them in socials, it's just easy. Um, instead of like, if I really need them to be like scan on high res, then I just do it myself. But yeah, you can, go by with the medium JPEGs. If you don't need them printed huge or if you don't really need to do any corrections after. Yeah. When you when you outsource, uh, Maria, where where are you outsourcing to? Um, in LA, I, well, I used to develop at school. The NIFA in LA has the um, partnership with School of Light. Um, so I used to do everything there, develop and print, which was amazing and I want to go back. <laughs> but um, right now I just uh, outsource it to the icon on Wilshire. Okay. Yeah. And mm -hmm. yeah, they're really nice. I did try it, Sammy's and it sucked. So yeah, the icon. Yeah, icon does a really great job. Um, yeah. If any NIFA students right now, photo students are watching, use that service and print all that you can print because it's yes. real when you get out of school. Yeah, those are uh, really good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, lovely, lovely. Um, can you guys share an invaluable lesson that you've learned through your process of, you know, printing your work or publishing your work? Um, something that you just, that just, just stuck with you and it just dictates how you, you know, move forward. I think for me, I learned that there's nothing too small or nothing too big in the sense that um, I think sometimes smaller, more indie, you know, un less recognizable uh, platforms kind of get um, like a side eye as if they're not good enough. But I think a lot of these smaller publications actually do really amazing things because um, they have more like creative freedom and they just have a passion to do it so I think um I learned that everything is an opportunity like you should seize it if 
it comes by. Um, Cause you never know, like someone can see your work published randomly in some website or blog and maybe two, three years later, they find it online and they contact you, right? Like you never know. And I think um, kind of just like allowing yourself to explore different um, platforms, not be shy about it, submit to as much as possible, um, understand that rejection is kind of like a big part of it, embrace it, enjoy it, and move forward to the next thing. Um, I think the more you submit, the more comfortable you get and the more success you would have from it potentially. Um, yeah, that's kind of like my two, two cents. Yeah. Rutvik, how about you? An invaluable lesson. Uh, so I'm, I'm a very control freak when it comes to, uh, when it comes to this kind of work. I, I like to control everything possible. And giving up that control intuitively for me is a little bit tough. So letting go of that and letting things flow on their own is something that I've learned and something that I'm trying to evolve it into. That's, that's a lesson that I would say, uh, give it to a lot of people. Like, yes, you have to do things in a certain way, but if you can move out of that, uh, you know, out of that box kind of thinking, you would create something more different and interesting as well. Fellow control freak, I feel that. Yes, 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 yes. Great. Uh, Maria, John? Go ahead. <laughs> oh my God, you're waiting for me? God. Um, what was the question was again, it was... Um... What's uh, the, like an invaluable lesson you've learned from having your work you know, printed, published, um, something that just dictates how you, how you work, how you move forward? Um, as far as, I guess, for the work being published, just been, what's been really, um, amazing has just been the reach of the work. Um, the work has been published internationally and in like, I can't even count how many countries, um, my one project has been like just moving around um, for the last two or three years now. Um, so it's just been interesting just having those conversations and you think that you're working in like such a tight bubble, but everyone else can resonate with it on, you know, one level or another. And um, just the different access points for the work for them to really affect folks has been really interesting. So for me, again, I'm working in, you know, a fine art context that's you know, talking about a American issue, even though it is more of a global issue as well. Um, just seeing how people respond to that and, you know, Korea and Brazil and, you know, France and, you know, having people reach out and be able to say like, oh, they saw the publication translated in their language and this is what it meant for them. So that was, that's always been like really special. And um, uh, yeah, that always stays at the top of the mind. And how about you, Maria? Yeah, I think it's mostly how proud people are when they see themselves represented somewhere especially publication or the movies or something like it's really really important and right now I see this panel is very diverse so I love it <laughs> and I feel we represent um, something special from our cultures and yeah in my case a lot of the women that I photographed that have been published is also um, what they have accomplished and it's really important for um well especially these magazines are in colombia and um it just gives people in different countries you know like um like the how do you say this like um an emotional starting point to to be like oh i can accomplish different different things like this person i'm seeing here published so yeah, bit of representation, right? Yeah. Yeah. Lovely. I just want to thank you all for hanging out with me today, chatting. And um I'm just I'm I'm very full and I'm I'm very appreciative to have done this with you guys. And um thank you. Uh and we're gonna end it here for the day. Um thank you guys for coming. Um, and I just want to wish you guys a lovely day and thanks.
Thank you for having Thank us. You. Thank you for all the great questions. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye.